Good morning everyone. Welcome to Egg and a Craft. Today we're gonna do something completely different. We are attempting to do an epoxy pour on a tabletop again. And this time I'll try not to mess it up. So a bit of a history of this. <coughs> I was two months into epoxy resin when I saw a video on a guy who done an epoxy resin pour with a tabletop resin which is a very very high viscosity epoxy and uh, he damned he, he taped around the, the perimeters or the edge of the tabletop and he poured an amazing epoxy art in it and he put some alcohol and did the magic and heat gun and everything and the whole thing came out amazing right now that was I, with my medium viscosity, one inch deep pour epoxy, and I'm like, I can do this, I can easily do this, I hope. So I, I, I basically set up everything, put on a massive coffee table top on it, it wasn't even level, and I mixed up a bunch of colors uh, without any mask in a closed room, and um and i didn't dam it around so i didn't prepare uh, a dam around the tabletop so basically the, the, the whole thing just pulled down long story short i have a video up here of that fail i messed about with it for about six hours elbow deep in epoxy without any gloves masks protection whatsoever and uh, it came out a disaster so i took it outside in the garden and it magically cured up to some passable color okay so it was a win in the end and and actually i sold that table that was the first ever thing i ever sold uh, <laughs> because someone liked it anyhow long story short uh it was a mess it was a failure but I learned a lot. I learned to use a mask, I learned to use protection, and so on and so forth. And I learned how epoxy behaves and everything. So it is time that I attempt it again. But this time, we're gonna do it in small. We're gonna do it small, okay? So we're gonna do it in a reasonable size. Now, this is funny, this is a, end table or I don't know how you would call it it's it's like a little little cheap ass furniture basically this is a, a 10 mil thick MDF board and it's primed primed with uh, acrylic primer on the bottom it has three legs but they are let me let me show you this. This is very funny. Just a sec. Yay, only the team. Okay, so you can see here it's a little wood square, and they got a uh, plunge router, and they routed out the bottom, but they routed it out in an angle. They drilled a hole in the middle, and they're super glued. They super glued a bolt holder or a bolt. I don't know how this is called, but I can show you what it is. So they screwed this. Uh... Okay, so this is this is what it is, and this accepts a bolt. It has. Uh... So you put this inside the wood, right, and you can put a bolt in it. And you can screw it up. Um, I got a box of the threaded insert. That is what it's called uh, because it's on the box. I got a bunch from Amazon and I realized it's extremely overpriced on Amazon so go to your local hardware store okay. Ask grandpa in the local hardware store for this and for bolts and support your local businesses first of all second of all he knows best okay 
he knows where to get it from and he can get it for you in bulk for like uh, not for per piece he can probably get it per kilo or per pounds or whatever so anyway we got this right and the whole thing has four pins and some super glue underneath and it's glued to the table and you got the leg which is made of I think it's spruce. I wouldn't put my neck on it, but it's some sort of cheap soft wood, okay? And they put a bolt or, or a thread into it. And that bolts into the bottom. Now, funny thing, this table costed me seven euro 99 cents, which is about seven bucks, okay? In the local, uh, dollar store and <laughs> they put one of these in the wrong way so one of the legs pointed inside so I had to rip it out so I got the chisel I went under it and I ripped it off twisted it around sanded it down glued it back and filled the hole with the uh, everyday average filler so now I have an actual proper table that's the intro and we are six minutes into the video and I have done nothing. Before we get on with it, I just want to say some thank yous. Okay, so last week I started this, uh, this uh, buy me a coffee link. So there is this uh, website called buymeacoffee.com and people can throw money at the screen to support me or buy me a coffee or help me out a little bit with some money or whatever and I am strongly against uh, shilling as you know by now you can see in the other channels and my rantings and all that but people people said that I should start something that where they can support me I'm like okay cool let's do this so I got supporters on buymeacoffee.com and uh, my producers there who make the show possible and make me be able to actually operate in the morning and get my coffee are the following Amanda Lacoste, Henry by Wendy and Adam Starr uh, you can check out Wendy's Instagram here or in the what you call it description yeah of the video and I also want to thank you for Theresa for the super thanks on my previous video uh, I didn't even know that that's a thing so apparently my channel is monetized now and and uh, it's good it's good it, it helps every little helps like with, with, with this support I am now able to to put down the deposit for the for the rent for a month for for my actual physical shop so if everything fails in my real project you know where i try to open a shop and sell my wares to people who come to the island i will be able to pay the bills for another month with, with this help so what i'm trying to say is i'm eternally grateful for you guys and uh you know, I never thought I'm, I'm gonna add value to this world, but apparently I do. And thank you. You know, art is for everyone and I'm standing by it. Anyway, let's get the show going, right? Let's get the show on the road. All right, so, um, took me about a half an hour, but I made the dam around the tabletop so how i did it first i done it with uh boxing boxing tape salad tape whatever the hell you call this thing tape and then i realized this guy stretches so i basically stretched it all over it all around it and the whole thing just bloop, flopped it flopped uh, on top of it <laughs> so i ripped that off and i was like uh 
let's use painter's tape, right? So I use painter's tape. Funny thing is, I super glued one side of it, so it all constantly rips. Anyhow, uh, yeah, so I used the uh, painter's tape. And on the bottom, you see it? I put some tape around it just to seal it. So my baby swimming pool is ready. Now it is time to mix some epoxy. And I have no idea how much I want to mix. I will probably mix about 400 grams in total and divide it up and all that jazz. I'm gonna, um, yeah, I'm just gonna cut here. You know how to mix epoxy, you know how to put the colors in. I'll see you guys when I'm done with the mess and uh, we're gonna pour together. See ya. All right, gang. So epoxy is mixing, but I had an idea. I want to have a black base, so I'm getting the average everyday black satin black spray paint. I'm gonna clean up a little and I'm just gonna hit it. Like so. I don't know what it's gonna do, but I hope it's gonna give me a nice base coat. Up. Okay. Right, I'm gonna leave now because I didn't put a mask on. And we'll be back when it's dry. Alright gang, we are back and I have some news. So I have a cup of black which I made with uh, children's acrylic fingerprint paint print paint yeah that's what i've done and i used leather coloring balm to get the black both of them are water-based uh, i used a tiny bit like a uh, half a teaspoon altogether so that's that and i'm using a black base and i realized that's gonna help me out with the with the color i have gold greenish gold mica the cheapest i could get on amazon whatever green same brand you know this is the 24 package or the 46 package of mica colors in little ampules like this uh, they were great 20 bucks for the whole set i'm gonna use them for a year at least uh, and i have some white which is questionable because it looks like silver eh, anyway whoa eh, now i have cream on my window how am i gonna explain that to the wife oh ew okay you know what fuck it now I have frosted glass. It's very expensive. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> I am not cleaning up because I already broke the window and I have to fix it and replace it. Eventually, one day, someday. So, um, I am. there are two ways to go about this. You can either pour the things separately or you can mix them together in a cup. And uh, I am going to mix some of them in the cup and pour some of them separately. So what I'm gonna do, because we are testing here on Aginocraft all the time, uh, here's my idea. I'm gonna have this white, okay? This white is made with uh, white colored paste, okay? And I have some some silicone spray, but it, it is 100% pure silicone spray for uh, lubricating gears and stuff. So that is basically for machining. Well, not machining but for machinery and here's my idea I'm gonna put some uh, silicone into the white okay and 
I hope. Okay, so here is my theory. Uh, I saw some acrylic uh, artist pushing a process where she put silicone in in her acrylic paint, and when she when she hits it with heat, when she hits it with heat, uh, it starts creating cells. So my idea, I'm gonna pour some in the white. Um, I wanna do it. Can you see here? Here, her? Yes, you can. Good. I'm gonna. One, two, three, four. Four drops in it. Just wanted to keep it away from the piece. I'm gonna mix it up a little. Yeet. And I'm gonna pour this into the black. Like so. Ooh, this is doing the cell already. Okay, I'm gonna pour some of the gold into the black. Like so. And I'm gonna pour some of the green into the black on top of the white. Let's see what it does. And I'm going to use this weird ass white on top of everything. This should be enough, more than enough. And then uh, I think I'm gonna pour it from the way I poured it in it. Uh, let's see what we do. So far, nothing. Oh no, something is coming. Do you see what I see? Do you see this reaction? I think I broke the code. I think I hacked the system. Dude, dude, dude. Do you see these cells? You can buy the, the, the cell creation spray from the famous YouTubers if you wanna make epoxy art, you know? 20 bucks a spray can and I'm using everyday machine lubricant four drops in the whole thing just four drops four teeny tiny drops okay this looks amazing I don't even know what to do next I have a bunch of epoxy left um, I always mess it up here this is the point when I mess everything up Because I tend to overdo it. I don't want to make a pentagram. To my island. Everybody here is Orthodox Christian. And it's funny, it's Orthodox, Orthodox Christianity here. And uh, the old religion mixing. I mean the old Greek, ancient Greek religion. Okay, I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it. Boys, make me walk away. Just, just make me go away. I need to, I need to stop doing this. I need to let this go. Done, done, done. Okay, uh, I have a bunch of leftover epoxy and I have a soap holder, soap holder holder 
mold, which I started using, but it's already cured in it. So I need to get a piece of sandpaper, just a tiny corner, to scuff up the, the epoxy in the mold. Because I'm using this for leftover epoxy now. I need to create a surface where the new new epoxy can adhere to. And I'm gonna pour the leftover of this weird white into it. Okay, four drops of silicone have done this. This is a miracle. This is amazing. I'm gonna pour the leftover white. I'm not gonna put any more white in there. I might put a little bit more green though. You know. You know what? I'm gonna put a few drops of silicone. One, just one drop. Come on. One drop. Give me one drop. One. I did one drop into the leftover green. It's not much. It's not too much. I want more green. I'm gonna use some of my spare clear epoxy. Mix it in. Mix it in. Mix it in. Okay. Okay. So far so good. I used up all my ugly epoxies. That's good because I can't pour more. I can't mess it up even more. But I think I need to do two things. I need to use a torch or a heat gun to get rid of the bubbles. And I might gonna use some alcohol to do to, to get some reaction out of it. Um what to do next? I think I'm gonna use a heat gun this time because I have paper tape around it, right? And I don't want it to catch on fire. If I use a blowtorch, that will probably happen. So, heat gun time. Sorry. I think it's time to stop because this is starting to blend here. Alright, 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 alright. I don't have... I do have some more bubbles in there. I have to hit it with a blowtorch, guys, but I have to be very quick because I need to make sure that I don't mess up the masking tape. Okay, okay. <laughs> Save that. I have something in here I need to get out. Particle. Did I get it? Piece of debris, something. All right, all right. 
I'm making art here. I'm a very sophisticated gentleman. I am the new Pollock. Or not. Huh. Okay, so I think I let this cook. And we come back. I'll see you guys then. Hey everyone, I'm back. Um, so because the tabletop is going so well, I thought it's high time that I actually ruined something. Because, you know, it's just not egging a craft if everything goes well and there is no mishaps and we don't push the edges. So, I came up with the idea of using Sud, Suede, Suede, whatever, leather dye, you know, the soft fuzzy leather dye. And I got black and I got green because these are my two favorite colors. And I will try to tint these with leather dyes. Now, if you use leather dye to color wood, then you have to make sure when you seal it, the chemical what you're sealing with doesn't dif dissolves the, the leather dye because it's made with denatured alcohol and the denatured alcohol keeps all the components together as far as my understanding i could be wrong please correct me in the comments because this is how we grow this is how we learn so this is what we're gonna do i'm gonna get some come get some get some uh, green into this little plastic whatever like this much I put can you say it? like tiny amount into this uh, plastic container I ran out of party cups so when I go to the grocery store I need to get some please remind me in the comment section as usual because I will can forget about it as always so I need party, uh, party cups and gloves so put that on my shopping list please guys help me um, but I need to increase the volume of these material these these uh, dyes so what I'm thinking I'm gonna do I'm gonna get some 95% alcohol and see how it reacts to it I'm going to put them here Sorry, I'm not moving the camera to get you close up, but it's standing on a five dollar tripod with a with a swing arm, and this is the, the to set up. So it's another fifteen minutes. Okay, so adding some alcohol to the party. Uh, good news, the color stayed. It didn't disappear. Add some more. Okay, good. Happy days. Now, shit, I have to change this somehow. Um, hold on. Okay, now you can see my big belly and the table. That's the two most important thing you, you have to see. So I got black and green. And these guys came with these fuzzy balls. Oh, come now. Grow up. So I got my hairy balls here. Focus you animal. There you go. So these are my hairy balls with a rod. Oh, I need to grow up seriously. And they came with it and you use them to apply on the material. Okay. Let's go do this. <laughs> I, uh, the invasive thoughts I have in my head right now to anyway right so I'm gonna get my rod and I'm gonna use my hairy balls to color that said rod like so Woo, fancy okay that's not bad 
I watched the uh, Black Tear Studios video last night. He just came up with a new uh, technique, or uh, he just showcased the new technique where he uses uh, mm -hmm. dye on his tabletop to create a, an amazing effect. Go have a look. But he inspired me to mess with the colors and paints today. So that's what I'm doing. And I don't know where this one goes, but it definitely goes somewhere. And we definitely gonna have a result. One way or another. I don't know if we put more coats and it, it's gonna deepen the color or not. Because this is some cheap wood. Okay, let's just leave this guy here. Let's do the second one. The greening. Um, thank you very much again for, for all of your support and thank you very much for watching all my dummy videos. I really hope I can give you some entertainment and some actual value because, uh, because the most expensive thing, the most valuable thing someone can give to another person is their personal time. And uh, by you giving me your time watching my videos it is it is a huge thing in my opinion and uh, i really hope that what i'm doing here jokes aside is actually helping you in some way because all i wanted in life is add some value to this world if and if that's going to be my legacy, I am a happy man. So. That's about it for this greening. I will push this out later. Said no one ever. Um, okay, so I have the green on. And it's still damp to the touch, but I'm gonna hit it with the black and uh, see where it takes us. Well, that was pointless. Was it? Ah. Um, yeah, it turns out black is stronger than green. Well, you know what? I'm going to try to sand it once it dries. And we'll see if I can bring out some of the green hues from underneath. Now that turned black. Eh. You live and learn. But the fuzzy balls are working. They are spreading the joy. I have decided to do live streams on Sundays, which are going to be simple unscripted hangout live streams every sunday night eastern european time night uh, where we can hang out do live q a uh, talk talk about what we've done the week you know what work projects we are working on and share experiences uh, we, we ask questions from each other about the processes and ask for help and we try to help each other. It's so basically a maker hangout and uh, I might do some art or something to, to, to actually, you know, 
for you to have something to watch and not just talk but yeah that's my plan so if you want to come by on Sundays uh, every so my channel is going to have a uh, premiere always scheduled in so you can save it and you can you know join in on the live stream and uh, hang out with us that would be great you know it's greatly appreciated if you come by so yeah i'm gonna let these to dry and uh, i'll see you guys when i have something to do quick situation report i took the tape off and the epoxy was uh, stretchy so it was goopy enough you can see it it's it drips but it, it barely drips anymore you know and it's coming out great look at it I think it's something, you know, um, I'm quite happy about it, I am, um, because this is not level, so I'm twisting it like every two, three, four minutes, just to keep the picture in the middle, it's, it's not level this way, so it slopes this way, um, oh yeah, one thing I wanted to show you, this is what happens with epoxy if you are leaving it in the tub. You can't see it, but it's smoking right now. And let me get a spatula to show you how it cures. So this is literally flash cured into the pot in about 20 minutes. I forgot about it, so that's what you get when you have ADHD and you do and you mix art with ADHD. So this is a solid piece of epoxy, which I will cut up and use up in other projects later. Anyway, when it gets hot, when it gets smoky, just take it outside and make sure nobody's close and uh, yeah, so stay safe. Hey gang, we came out to the sun because. I need to get away from the table. I can only go in every half an hour to turn it around, but otherwise I would start touching it and we don't want that. So, this guy dried, more or less, and I think it's time that we try to bring out the color. So I got some 240 sandpaper, and I'm just gonna rub my wood with some sandpaper and see what comes out. This is song this is wrong on so many levels. So sorry about that. Anyhow. All right, so it does look like oil green to me. Don't know if... Oh, come on, focus. It doesn't, doesn't pick up right because of the sun's reflection, but it looks like a dirty, oily, greeny. I kind of like it. I think it will go well with the tabletop, but now I have to stop here and I have to go check on the tabletop. Okay, so there are two ways I can continue from here. I can apply more color or I can finish it. And uh, I'm going to finish it with pure tongue oil uh, just for the sake of bringing the color out. And I'm not gonna put on gloves anymore. <laughs> because I think I have failed keeping my hand clean today but maybe tomorrow so I'm gonna get a piece of paper I don't use microfiber towels to do tongue oil because from my experience it will basically stay in the rag and it will never come out okay let's see what we've done Okay, focus you 
Idiot. What you guys think? Huh? I think he's alright. We just did something. We did art. I liked gradient. I should make a table like this. Or something. This is awesome. I'm only using some oil just to bring out the bring out the color really. It's not for extra sealing or anything. This is just a end table leg, so this is not a very important part of the piece. But look at these colors, bro. Huh. I like it. I like it very much. So anyhow. We let these boys dry. I'll try to clean up myself first of all, and then uh, we continue. I'm sorry, but I had to show it off in the sun. This is how it looks. I think it's pretty neat. Just look at that, look at the color grading. So, this works. Hit it with two tints, start sanding, and you got something cool out of it. Just look at that. If it could focus, maybe like this. Focus, focus, thank you. Check it out. Anyway, see you guys in a minute. All right, so final check-in before completion, I think. Stopped moving. So what I done, I sprayed a little silicone on top of it. I'll show you how much. So basically it was like, not this much, like this. I don't know if it's picks up, but it's like this. Just spitting some. So that's what I done. I, I sprayed it like that to to get some silicone droplets on top and then I let it do its thing and what it done is ripped it ripped the the top layer like that all over it didn't create a circle or cell it created a rip like so and then I hit it with alcohol same thing just these little droplets here and there and I waited for it to do something and then I hit the whole thing with a heat gun and evenly heated up the whole thing and uh, this is what we get right now and it's fairly smooth in my opinion or from my view um, anyway so this is how she looks right now and she has beautiful legs as well so I'm just gonna wait for her to completely cure put it together and uh, see the end result in, in proper proper lighting I'll see you guys then I also did some finger painting so I just pulled my finger here on the edge of it just to, you know, ADHD, so that's the thing. Um, I forgot to mention that Lisa Oliver has become a member of the channel as well. And uh, thank you so much, Lisa, for your support too. You can become a channel, channel member, you can send super thanks, you can do the buy me a coffee. Oh my God, like since I, since I started the... Uh, to, to get monetized on YouTube. Everything is just so complicated now. I have so many things to read. Uh, contracts and terms and conditions and this and that and fill out forms and everything. <sighs> it's, 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 a, it's, wow. it's a little bit overwhelming. 
but anyway i'll will, i will learn how to keep track of everybody who is giving me support and i swear i will do some coherency in in the thank yous and the, and the mentions and all that jazz but bear with me it it takes it takes some time to learn learn the ropes anyway uh we wait for this to cure and i can't wait to put legs on this thing all right quick update you see it's a little bit texturized at this point in time i think i have the shapes and colors locked in very nicely but uh, i made a mistake and it's time to share so remember i sprayed the uh, silicone on top to get the get the texture uh, not the texture but the but the color variation going now i forgot about that and when it was sticky i wanted to do a flat coat because it had a little bump here and there and i was like ah you know what while it's sticky i'm just gonna cover the whole thing with a flat coat and it will stretch out and it will look great now i forgot that i sprayed silicone spray on top which means that when i poured the flat coat on top of it the silicone just just didn't let it adhere to the previous surface so it created these uh big holes in the pour and that was the point i realized i up. so what i done i removed all the excess epoxy and i poured it into my soap holder to try to salvage as much as possible out of it and uh, i started thinking i scraped everything off basically and i made it a little worse than it was before but then i started thinking how to fix this current situation because now i have uh, it's 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 hard to the touch but but it needs to cure a bit more i realized that i i need to let it completely harden and then I need to lightly sand the whole thing because I have to remove the excess silicone somehow and I don't want to use uh, solvents because I don't really want to mess up the art or cause bigger trouble than we already have so yeah I'm gonna wait for it to completely harden and then hit it with a sander probably just a, just a light you know 240 grit nothing nothing way too serious i'm gonna send it lightly and uh, do a flood coat you know how a flood coat is mix the resin pour it over wait for it to cure and then we're gonna assemble the table i hope i can finish this today and upload it but if not we're gonna have it tomorrow i'll see you guys then something cute mama bumblebee in the pomegranate tea tree having her lunch focus you thank you she's enjoying her lunch in my garden ah look at that oh my god oh so tasty so tasty i'm sorry i'm gonna let you get back at it bye all right, we are back. So to catch you guys up, what happened? Um, we got the silicone situation. Remove the remove the excess resin. Now I sanded the whole thing down, and it's still soft, so I can still push my nail into it. And uh, I think I have managed to remove the silicone leftovers from the top. I washed it with 95% alcohol a few times and if I put silicone on my fingers and then I put alcohol on it and then I wipe it off, it removes the silicone from my finger. So based on that, I assume that I managed to remove the silicone from the tabletop. 
And uh, this is another experiment now. Because now I will try to flood coat this thing to restore the original colors and the original... Well, everything, just to make it nice and shiny and flat. I could sand it and polish it, but I think this this one deserves a mirror flood coat, in my opinion. So, yeah, um, I'll mix some shit in and we'll be back in a sec. Back. Got some epoxy. And I think I have a bug in it. Because, yay! Um... I'm gonna put on some gloves again because I will have spread it with me handies. Uh, why do I get a bug in my epoxy all the time? I mean, I know why. Working wood shack, friends. Uh, come out. And I drop it back in. Okay. Whew, I'm so stressed out, but yeah, we'll see. Pour it in the middle. Let it flow. I'm willing to sacrifice this much epoxy. If it fails, it fails. Okay, and now I'm doing the spreading. Again, we have to break the surface tension because epoxy likes to go where epoxy has been before. So we're gonna wet the whole thing to help it to spread. I am not sure if I saved it or not. I still see dimples happening, but I will not scrape this off. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna leave this on, see what happens. And if all else fails, I'm gonna do another coat on top of it. wasn't a lot I only use like uh, I don't know, 50 grams for this coat so I will probably do another 50 grams one more once more yeah it's a lesson it's a lesson we are learning we are learning yeah um, I think I'm gonna show it to you what I mean about the dimples you might be able to see it now it's gone. Now I can't find it. From the reflection, you might be able to see the dimple. Anyway, never mind. Trust me. We have a dimple. I have. Anyway, see you guys in a minute. Alright, anyway, guys. Here she is. In all of her glory. What you think? Because I think, I think this is a win. I think we did it. Now, using silicone, okay, I almost broke my ankle. Anyhow, so using silicone, I think should be done if you don't flood coat it or before you flood coat it, it has to be sanded. That's that's the main takeaway of this experience. And if you use one or two hundred percent pure, one or two drops hundred percent pure silicone in your epoxy, you're gonna get good lacing in it too. But I am very curious. How do you solve? How do you create cells and lacing in your epoxy art? I would love to hear because all I could find are, you know, the custom branded uh, 
spray this in it and now you're gonna have the lacing and all that i wanna hear your homebrew ideas on this so yeah please leave it in the comments and uh, if you like what i do you can share this video or subscribe to my channel or appease the algorithm gods and engage with the video so leave a comment even if it's a nasty one anyway thank you very much for watching guys i hope you got something out of this video and i'll see you guys in the next one bye